Today I'd like to look at the subject of the first step is in to the war. And continuing with the theme that Michael has said, for us everybody matters. And I guess as we look through and go back in 2020, everybody did matter. It seemed to be that there was a more caring attitude among people, looking out for one another. And we're trusting that that attitude will carry on into 2021. Just a little bit of lightness, and if I told you this story before, please um, pretend to provide it. The story of the two prawns, Justin and Christian, they loved playing together. And they played together all the time, every day. But one day, Justin decided that he wanted to be a shark. And he wished to be a shark and he found that when there was a storm and he thought and thought and thought about it, it just might happen and then wham it happened. He became a shark. Well, he raced around to see his friend Christian. The Christian saw that he was a shark, so rushed back inside his house. I'm not coming out to you because you'll eat me. Well, Justin the shark went about his life, but he found that he missed his friend so much. He was so lonely. So then he decided, I would like to be a prawn again. And so, again, he waited for this storm to come, and the storm came, and he wished and wished and wished, and wham! He became a prawn. He couldn't wait to rush around to Christian's house. And he knocked on the door and said, Christian, it's Justin. Oh no, I'm not coming out to eat me. Oh, but I've changed. I'm a prawn again, Christian. Sorry, that's the joke. Can somebody explain? Take a while to get through. Takes a while to get through. Now, just to, just to tell us what we're going to look at this morning, Carolyn's going to bring to us a reading. Now it's from Joshua 3, and um, King has finally got them all there for me. So, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Since you have never travelled this way before, they will guide you. Stay about half a mile between them, behind them, keeping a clear distance between you and the ark. Make sure you don't come any closer. Then Joshua told the people, Purify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders among you. In the morning Joshua said to the priests, Lift up the ark of the covenant and lead the people across the river. And so they started out and went ahead of the people. The Lord told Joshua, Today I will begin to make you a great leader in the eyes of all the Israelites. They will know that I am with you, just as I was with Moses. Give this command to the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant. When you reach the banks of the Jordan River, take a few steps into the river and stop there. So Joshua told the Israelites, Come and listen to what the Lord your God says. Today you will know that the living God is among you. He will surely drive out the Canaanites, Hittites, and all those people ahead of you. Look, the Ark of the Covenant, which belongs to the Lord of the whole earth, will lead you across the Jordan River. Oh, sorry. Now choose twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. The priests will carry the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth. As soon as their feet touch the water, the flow of water will be cut off upstream and the river will stand up like a wall. So the people left their camp to cross the Jordan and the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. And I'm not going to tell you any more about that. Thank you. So, 
as I was saying, my theme is the first step is in the water. Have you ever bought a, a block of land and wanted to build? Some people have, and it's a great experience, something that you probably only do once. But when you do, you want to go back and look at that block all the time as it's being built. And as a, you've got your plans made, and you've got where you want to have each room, and you go out to the block and you have a look at it, and this is going to go here, here, there, the landscaping is going to be here. And so that's exciting. And it doesn't happen just by chance. There's a lot of people involved, and everybody matters in getting that together. Archbishop Desmond Tutu, you may have heard of him or remember him, he said that when the white missionaries came to us in Africa, they had the Bible and we had the land. They said to us, let us pray. And so we prayed and when we opened our eyes, we had the Bible, but they had the land. We're talking about a nation claiming their land. That's what we're going to look at today. The story of the Israel nation. From the time that they left Egypt and as they passed through the Red Sea in that miraculous way where God showed his wonders. And for 40 years they wandered simply because of their disobedience and because of their infractions. So it took two generations to be able to come to this point in time. And now they were about to claim the promise that God had made for them. And in Joshua 1, verses 6 to 9, the man is going to share with us, is what was laid on Joshua's heart. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the left or the right. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Thank you, mate. And that same verse really goes down to us today, doesn't it? As we move out into the unknown, as we move out into a new year, with supplies ahead, we can be strong, we can be courageous, but we know that when we go, we do not go alone, because God has promised to go with us. And in this promise of their claim, it's referred back to Genesis 32, verse 2, where it says, that the land which I gave to Abraham and Isaac I will give to you and your descendants. I will give you this land. That is the promise from God. And if you make a promise, it has to be kept. And so they prepared now to claim the promise. But of course, when they do this, it's going to bring change. Who likes change? Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's threatening, sometimes we don't like it. They had to change. Why? Because they were a nomadic people. They were nomads. They were now to become no longer tent dwellers. They had to have a certain responsibility. They were now governed by certain powers which they hadn't experienced before. Authorities had to be obeyed. They had to put down roots. And now, you know, sometimes 
We see that happening in churches today. We see that some Christians don't want to put down roots. They would rather be nomads and wander around than grace their presence upon various places without making any contribution, without taking any responsibility. And Renee's got another verse for us too in 1 Corinthians 12. And we'll see what Paul says about what responsibilities we have for one another. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of Each one of us, we have a responsibility. We can't be isolated. We need to be part of the body. For that whole body to function, we need to be there. Because we're important, each one of us. And so now for the children of Israel, it's crunch time. It's time now for all the words and all the things that were said have to be revealed in action. Action was required. Time for words was over. They now have to demonstrate that they were ready to accept this responsibility. Have you seen the ad on TV? The little girl sitting in the car, are we there yet? I don't know if you've ever heard that as a parent, I don't suppose you have. <laughs> Who hasn't? Are we there yet? Well, their question is now answered. Yep, you're here. You're here now, guys. You're here. Now what are you going to do about it? Now God has been preparing His people for all this time. God has been preparing the believers. And so as they come to this time, they come being prepared. And so there were certain instructions that were given to them. Remember? We don't need you to be a past clinging people. That is history now. And God made sure that they were very clear as to what was about to happen. Now, as we look down the barrel of 2021, let us make sure that we too are not past winning people. Let us make sure that what the effects of 2020 in the negative sense are not clinging to each of us, to us as a church. Because we don't need to be past clinging people. But we need to learn from the past, put that behind us. And what the year eventually becomes will be up to us and what we are prepared for. And as Joshua had laid on him by the Lord, the instructions, he then again gave that to all the officials that he had under him to disseminate that information among the people so that they knew exactly what was going to happen the next day. He gave instructions right down to the details of what they needed to do. This was a very special time. And I was reminded of this, but when I was thinking about this, I thought of a song. And the song that was written by Jeff Bullock. Some of you may not know Jeff Bullock because he's a couple of decades past. He wrote some beautiful music. 
and one of them was called Now is the Time. Now is the time to worship. Now is the time to lay down all my plans, all my dreams. I lay them down because now is the time to worship. And you know, if you're under a God-instructed direction, you don't want anything to come in between those instructions. So you don't want anything of yourself to true and to become evident. You want to lay them down to His will. The instructions also included physical things that they had to do. Remember, they had been a desert dwelling people. Washing clothes wasn't high on their list of priorities because of water. But now they're at the River Jordan. And so God said, we want you to be purified. The NIV says to be consecrated. The Amplified said to be separate. So you can see this is not just an ordinary moment. They were to be sanctified, consecrated, separate people. They didn't want, God didn't want you to be associating with other people. He wanted you to be separate to make sure that this was something special to you. And he said, I want you to make sure you wash your clothes. I want you to bathe. I want you to abstain from sexual relations. I want you to do these things and to listen to what the officials will tell you. You will be told how to assemble. You will be told where to go. You will see the Ark of the Covenant lifted and you know that that is the direction that you're going to follow that. And you see, all of these things were told to two million people. And they didn't have loudspeakers. So it's very important to listen. And now we come to the crossing itself. And you know, when you read verses 6 to 17, as Helen was reading before, you realise the importance of God placed on this particular occasion. And it was important because the Ark of the Covenant was the most important piece of equipment or piece of furniture, whatever you want to call it, that the Israeli nation had. Because it was consecrated by God. And now we find two million people paid to go and cross the River Jordan. But there might have been one little hitch. I don't know if it was much. The River Jordan was in flood. Would that have mattered much? I don't know whether you've seen flooded rivers. You probably have. If you were around in 1974, you would have seen a few bits of river and stuff going around Brisbane 2011, 2013 and remember that God himself here had not yet revealed himself and what did he say to those priests they had to carry the ark of the covenant he said to them to step out into the water. Well, I don't know in 1974 whether I would have been happy to step into the banks of the Brisbane River at that time because, well, we might have been knocked over by a tree that was flying down the river. It wouldn't have been any different in Jordan at that particular time. The Deborah would have been racing by. It wouldn't have been a very inviting place. But the priests had such 
a faith and a desire to honor God. They knew that if God told them to do this, that was good enough for them. And I think it was very brave of them, carrying the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders to wade into that flood river Jordan. And you know, once they put their feet into the water, what happened? God revealed himself. He revealed himself in such a miraculous way. Those waters parted, backed up for 12 miles on one side and 20 on the other. So that a dry path, a dry path on the river bed was available for 2 million people to cross safely. And we know, as the story was read to us, the procedure, priests had to go first. But then, before they could go, there had to be one from each of the tribe, of the twelve tribes, chosen to pick up some rocks and place them on the bed of the river. The priests would then stand on that and feed them with fire. First of all, the warriors, the army, had to go first. They went first and secured the banks on the other side to make sure that it was safe for the people to go. And so the people passed by. Passing by the Ark of the Covenant, held by the priest. Can you imagine that scene? It must have been really significant. Here was the presence of God, in a sense. That was the physical reminder to the people that this is God and His instructions for us in this path. And now He was showing us in this miraculous way that He was here with us. Because as they were crossing and they reached the other side, they must have realized that this had been a significant moment in the history of their nation. They must have had the satisfaction that as they came together, they could realise the importance of this, of this sanctified moment. They were now sanctified as a people. The event was sanctified because it was holy. The Ark of the Covenant was sanctified because it was holy. But the whole lot was umbrella and, and covered over by the glory of God who revealed himself in this special way. And you know, we need time for our personal moment of sanctification when we want to come and lay down all our plans. We lay down our dreams. We lay down our hopes. Because now is the time to do that. We're going to share communion. This is our moment when we can come and be sanctified fresh. We lay them down on the plains here today, on the altar of his love expressed through these emblems. Can you do that this morning? Can you share with me as together we go through this moment? This is a special moment when we have communion. It's a special moment of remembering a wondrous love. That was provided for each one of us so freely and so forth. We have some help helpers, I think, who would like to share this, this morning. Thank you. That's great.